Good morning, and thank you very much for coming to Toronto Police Headquarters. Today, I'd like to introduce to you Staff Inspector Greg McLean of Homicide, who will be updating us on homicide number two for 2012. Good morning. Actually, today I'm joined uh, by uh, Inspector Colin Greenway from Number 14 Division, uh, my second in command, uh, Inspector Peter Murrow, Acting Detective Sergeant Tam Bowie, lead investigator on the case uh, with uh, Detective uh, Rob North. We're also joined today by uh, the mother of uh, Mike Pimentel and some family and friends, and they'll be available for, uh, for questions uh, after the press conference. Firstly, I'd like to thank all of you for attending here today. As I've said so many times in the past, I believe it's necessary for we in the Homicide Squad to work very, very closely with our media partners to ensure that information is delivered to the public in a timely fashion to inform and to uh, seek the assistance of the public to advance ongoing homicide investigations. I've asked you to come here today to inform you of the results of Project Liberty. This relates to a homicide investigation number two for 2012. On Saturday, December 31st, 2011, Mike Pimentel attended New Year's Eve festivities at the Liberty Grand Ballroom located at 25 British Columbia Road in uh, Exhibition Place with some friends. On Sunday, January 1st, 2012, between 1.30 and 1.45 a.m., Mike, Mr. Pimentel left Liberty Grand with some friends, and their intention was to, uh, to hang out a little bit and then go to a, a residence that's in the area for some uh, further uh, festivities. Within a very short period of time, Mr. Pimentel became separated from his friends. He was observed by witnesses to be involved in an altercation with another male. At approximately 2.45 a.m., witnesses observed Mr. Pimentel staggering the area of Hannah Avenue and East Liberty Street, and he was covered in blood at that time. A short time later, Mr. Pimentel collapsed to the sidewalk, suffering from an apparent stab wound. Mr. Pimentel was transported to an area hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. An extensive investigation was conducted by members of my homicide squad and members of number 14 division for the next four years. In an effort to identify the person responsible for Mr. Pimentel's death. These investigative efforts included an extensive Twitter media campaign initiated, initiated by Acting Detective Sergeant Tam Bowie with the assistance of the Toronto Police Cyber Crime Unit that involved the systematic release of relevant information and photographs to the public through social media. This was done simply to reinvigorate the investigation and to attract attention of party goers that were in the area of the murder that morning with the understanding that witnesses may not be from the Toronto area, the target group for this campaign was national. This resulted in a very significant response from the public over social media, and we were able to communicate with potential witness, witnesses uh, internationally. Investigators also considered that the offender himself may not be from the greater Toronto area. This innovative investigative technique was was instrumental in identifying witnesses and the collection of further evidence. On Thursday, December 3rd, 2015, as a result of our investigations to date, with the assistance of the Calgary Police Service Fugitive Apprehension Unit and the RCMP K Division Serious Crime Branch in Alberta, Sean Poirier, 30 years of Calgary, was arrested on a Canada-wide warrant for the murder of Mike Pimentel. On Wednesday, December 8th, 2015, members of my unit returned Mr. Poirier to our jurisdiction. He was taken before the courts to face a charge of second-degree murder. Poirier appeared in the Old City Hall courts today for his first appearance, and he was remanded in custody. It must be said that the success of this case is a direct result of the cooperation of the media and the public who engaged the investigation through social media and provided valuable information that resulted in the arrest of this individual. Anyone that has any further information that relates to this particular investigation is asked to contact the officer in charge of the investigation, Acting Detective Sergeant Tam Bowie, at 416-808-7400, extension 7, 
7415 or through Crime Stoppers at 416-222-TIPS. Specifically, we are interested uh, in speaking to an individual that we know was in the area at the time of the homicide. There was a taxi driver that was directed to pick up Mr. Poirier in the area of Lake Ontario that morning. It is alleged that the taxi driver was provided with a cell phone to speak to Mr. Poirier in an effort to locate him, to pick him up. We would like the taxi driver to come forward and speak to our investigators as we believe that you have uh, valuable information to impart to us that may further our investigation. And the, uh, obviously, uh, the witnesses can contact the investigators at the number I provided uh, earlier. Further, anyone who has any information on any homicide investigation is asked to contact the Toronto Police Homicide Squad at 416-808-7400 or contact, again, Crime Stoppers at the number I previously provided. Your information may be valuable to the investigation and uh, may be all that's required to solve a uh, otherwise unsolved uh, homicide investigation. Now at this time I'll attempt to try to answer any questions that uh, you have. However, please bear in mind that this case is now before the courts and I am limited and I'll be very guarded into what information I can impart to you as it relates specifically to this case. After four years of working on this, can you tell us what broke this case? And more specifically, was it the social media campaign that broke this case, or was it police work? Uh, all of the above. Um, my, uh, this, this investigation occurred about a month before I came into the, the unit, and um, I've had many conversations with my investigators about it, because we believed, everybody believed it to be very extremely solvable based on the information we had at the time. So I, I think it's as a result of dogged determination upon the, the part of the investigators, um, the use of uh, what I would refer to as innovative investigative techniques that have not really been tried before in our jurisdiction. And that, that's what takes us to uh, the, uh, the social media campaign. And what results from that is further interaction with the public in our attempt to cultivate more information as it relates to the investigation. And that part was extremely successful. And the investigative follow-up and the things that we did after the fact have uh, taken us to this point. A photo of a female person of interest was released during the time, uh, or after the, uh, the time of the murder. Um, was there any contact with this female person of interest? I'm really not in a position to discuss who we have spoken to or we have not spoken to at this time. All I can say is that the information that was put out through the media to the public was uh, uh, what led us to uh, to bring us to where we are today. And there's also certain pieces of evidence, including a high heel shoe, uh, a keychain that were, was released by Toronto Police. Is there any connection to these pieces of evidence to this person of interest or, or this particular case? All, all I can really say about the the, the artifacts that were photographed and uh, to put out through the social media and the, and the media were significant uh, evidentiary significant evidentiary value to the investigation. The totality of which I, I'm not going to get into right now. But uh, those, uh, those items that were released through social media, um, we got a lot of feedback from, from people out there to not only help us identify what they were or where they come from or where they could be purchased. It was uh, actually uh, quite remarkable uh, to see the amount of information that flowed back to us about those items. So it was a significant um, investigative technique that was utilized by the officers. This idea about using these, these tweets to tweet clues like that, is this, is this an investigative technique that you think will be used much more often in the future? Well, you take every case uh, on its own uh, merits. In this particular homicide here, um, the timely release of this information, it really engaged uh, the public. Um, it attracted their interest. Uh, it was a little bit different, and uh, it sparked up their curiosity as to um, you know, how, how it would end up and, uh, and people just wanted to be a part of what was this phenomenon of what was going on through the use of social media. How much of a factor was DNA in uh, making an arrest of Mr. Poirier? I don't want to comment on uh, DNA plays a role in this particular investigation, however I'm not going to get into the significance of it. The taxi driver that you're looking for, you mentioned that he was given a cell phone with which to contact Mr. Poirier. Did yes. you mean like physically actually given a cell phone to call him on? Can you just clarify that? Uh, yes, he was. Uh, I guess uh, my understanding is that um, the individual uh, was in an area and in order for the taxi driver to find that particular person, Mr. Poirier, um, he was uh, 
the cab driver was given uh, contact with him through a cell phone. So this is something that's kind of unusual, and I think that uh, the taxi driver may recall this. Because I don't have that information. Who gave him the cell phone? Excuse me? Who gave him the cell phone? Was it a friend? That's something I'd like to just kind of hold on to at this point. Can you tell us a little bit more about the relationship between him and Helen Curry? Did they know each other? Had they just run into each other? Yeah, I don't have any uh, evidence or information that would suggest that they were known to each other. It was a, uh, a chance meeting on a street. That's my understanding. Do we know if Mr. Poirier attended uh, the same New Year's Eve party at the Liberty Grand? I'm not aware of that. I'm not aware of that. I'm sure the answer is no, but I'm not aware of it right now. Can you give us some insight into what it was? I mean, four years is a long time in a homicide investigation. Yes. What was it that made this all come together at this time? Something must have happened within the past couple of months to make this. Can you give well, us some? Absolutely. And uh, it was. Um, our ability to follow up on the information it received from members of the public. And um, that information was investigated, it was followed up on, and um, as a result, we find ourselves where we are today. And it's, it's that simple. It's just dogged determination. It's uh, turning over every stone to uncover all the, the minutiae of the investigation to get a full understanding as to what happened and who was responsible for it. The Twitter brought you witnesses. Is it safe to say that the social media campaign brought you witnesses who brought you the suspect, or did the social media campaign bring you the suspect? Uh, basically all of the above. The social media campaign uh, brought us more information that allowed us to further our investigations to identify the person we believe is responsible. Is Mr. Poirier linked to any ongoing uh, police investigations uh, in other jurisdictions, provinces? No, I'm not aware of that. I'm only concerned about his involvement in our particular case here. Resident Calgary at the time of the murder? Uh, I don't have that information. I don't believe so, but I'm, I'm just, I can't be sure. Can, can you just recap uh, the, uh, uh, the dates of when you, uh, you made the arrest possible? Yes, the arrest was uh, made on uh, uh, Thursday. Yeah, no, it was Thursday, um, December 4th, no, December 3rd, and uh, he was returned to our jurisdiction uh, on uh, the 8th, Wednesday the 8th. Are you looking for anyone else, or is this your only? We have no indication that there is any other suspects uh, involved in this particular uh, homicide investigation. However, uh, we never stop working a case. Uh, there's more things that we need to do to have a full understanding as to what took place. But based on what we know right now, we believe that this is the only individual that's responsible for this particular murder. You've, you've spoken a lot about sort of the use of Twitter with this investigation. Okay. It sounds like it was very successful because it was able to get the word out beyond Toronto. Homicides are often only reported sort of locally. And so is this a tactic that you think you're going to be using in cases where it's suspected that the person responsible might be outside of Toronto, might be outside the GTA, Canada, even you know, further out? So through, through the process of this investigation, there was a number of media releases that went out. And typically, just the way things occurred, they stayed more local and more to the greater Toronto area. The investigators believed that the people, we were not getting any results from the initial media response. So the investigators were of the view that uh, these per people may have been just passing through Toronto. It's New Year's Eve, they may have been passing through looking for a party, and they may be from some other point in Canada or U.S., we, we don't know. So the campaign was not only done to stimulate thought and to reinvigorate the investigation, but um, it was very captivating and it, it went international. Um, people were interested in it, and that was, that was a huge success because we wanted to get the, uh, the information out there about this case beyond the greater Toronto area. So that was, uh, it was huge. Uh, there was a great response. Hundreds of uh, uh, social media contacts came in, and uh, of course we followed up on all those things, but um, there's a lot of people that knew about not only the homicide, they knew about the investigative technique, and, they, and it just... Uh, reinvigorate it. That's what we wanted to do. Are police looking for anyone else that might have assisted Mr. Poirier in, um, in getting away, harboring him? Uh, uh, no, not at this point. We're just, well, obviously we're interested in speaking to the taxi driver, uh, but he would have had no knowledge, we don't believe, of, uh, of any wrongdoing. There, he's not done anything wrong. He's just picked up a fare. Um, but uh, no, I think that uh, unless some more information uh, comes to light, we've, we've put out an appeal. And if people have information, we'd be interested in speaking with them. And if there's investigations that need to take place as a result of that, then we'll do that. Any further questions? Thank you very much.
no problem. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. That concludes today's conference for the conference portion. We will allow the family to come up so that you can ask them some media, uh, some questions, okay? Just give us a sec to set that up. Present to you the family. Um, we have a uh, mother, um, girlfriend, and sister. Do we have any questions? So, can, have you, how are you feeling now that the now that someone has been arrested in your son or brother's or girl, boyfriend's case? Can someone come to the podium and just tell us your name so that we know who you're? Who you're okay. I'm Jennifer Defraga. I was uh, Mike's girlfriend at the time. Um, it's very overwhelming. Emotions are obviously running high today. We are very happy. Um, we don't even really want to talk about him. We all just want to say is thank you to the family and friends. All of our family and friends have supported us these past couple of years. Um, a humongous thank you to the homicide team. If it wasn't for them, their determination and their hard work, we would all not be standing here today and he wouldn't be in custody. So that's our main thing. It's a huge thank you to the homicide team. Does this provide any comfort or closure to the family knowing that your, uh, your son or boyfriend's alleged killer has been caught? Hi, I'm Carla Pimentel, Mike Pimentel's sister. I'm very thankful for the detectives and all the work that they have done. They never gave up on us, and that's a great thing. It's very heartbreaking to see his picture and see who killed my brother. But I'm thankful that he's inside right now. Like someone that does something like that deserves jail time. They don't deserve to be out there in the public. Can you tell us a little bit about your brother and what he was like? Kind of he was an outgoing guy, very happy. He was never sad. Everybody loved being around him. Great guy. Very heartbreaking. How have these last four years been for you and your Very family? Very hard. Very hard. I'm doing counseling to help myself cope with it. And it's kind of helping me. Uh, she's not doing counseling. No, but how's she doing? Very bad. Can we ask? She cries a lot about it, and she misses him very much. A lot. Okay. Gloria, can we ask you, it's, it's unbelievable to lose a child. None of us know what that is like. But when this is linked to a specific date, New Year's, what is that like every year as you prepare for New Year's? It's not the same. For me, it's not the same. It's hurt my heart. I miss my son so much. He deserves to go to the jail. I know he's not bringing my son back, but he deserves. I say thank you, that the thief, to help a lot. Comfort to know that this man has been arrested? So 
very, the uh, family's finding it very difficult to answer those questions. Um, and I think uh, they've been through enough today. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming. This concludes today's conference.